everyone and welcome back to Know Your Bible. I'm Reverend Birgit Goodrow and today we're going to study Exodus chapter 8 part 2. Last week we learned that Pharaoh has kept a very stubborn hard heart and also that he does not keep his word. The last plague was the plague of lice and so here all the people of Egypt were suffering again through the stubbornness of Pharaoh. So Pharaoh's thinking, if I stay persistent, I'm going to get my way at the end. But we know that does not help. If we're not going God's way and doing God's will, our persistence is not going to come through. Let us read together verse 20 and 21. And the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh as he comes out to the water. Then say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Or else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants, on your people, and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground on which they stand. In this lesson, we're going to see the fourth plague. Now, I want to tell you that I do study with Dr. Brew Corman, and he translates the Hebrew Bible into English. And the words in Hebrew for the fourth plague are not flies. The, the plague is wild animals. In some way, it does make sense. Why would it be flies after having the lice all over the place what do what purpose are the flies so this is what dr. Baru Corman says I'm going to see this fourth plague and let me share with you that this fourth plague is is controversial because in most English Bible they look at this word ha arof which they translate as flies now, it's a problem because we have a Hebrew word for flies, zivuvim, but this is a different word. It is derived from a Hebrew word which means a mixture. Now, we will learn when we get into Exodus chapter 12 that there will be a mixed multitude that comes out of Egypt, both Jew and Gentile. And this mixed multitude is made up of a variety of nations and peoples and languages and such. And it's called Arab Rav. Rav is a multitude. Arab here is, is mixed. It comes from three Hebrew letters. We see the Ein, Resh, and Vav. Vait, excuse me. Ein, Resh, and Vait. Now, what's important here? is that it simply is a mixture and what I would say would be wild animals. So when you look at it from how Judaism translates this word, it's a mixture of wild animals that come into the, the nation of Egypt, not just into the, the grassy areas and the outdoors, but also inside into the very homes and residence, stores, what have you, throughout all the buildings. And we'll talk more about that. But it's very important that we see that the word in Hebrew doesn't relate to flies, but rather it relates to the best idea is a mixture of wild animals, not domesticated animals, behemoth, but rather chayot that come in from outside, meaning in the forest, in the desert, and they come into the cities. So let's begin. We can hardly imagine that situation. You'd have to close off your windows and your doors somehow so these wild animals will not come in. And they're running in the palace. They're running all over the place. And they would be in the home before you would think about it because there was no warning. Pharaoh didn't warn his people about this. I'm going to mention some wild animals back then. The wild boar, 
the wild pig, the wild bear, the wild lion, tigers, the wild monkeys. Those are just some of them that came from the wilderness or from uh, wherever outside the city and ran into the city. And that was a huge plague for the people of Egypt and for Pharaoh. Let us continue reading in verse 22 and 23. And in that day I was set apart, the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, in order that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the land. I will make a difference between my people and your people. Tomorrow this sign shall be. So now Pharaoh is getting a little bit fed up. Or upset now he's called Aaron and Moses to him verse 25 and 26 then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said go sacrifice to your God in the land and Moses said it's not right to do so for we would be sacrificing the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God if we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes then will they not stone us? Let's think a minute of the time that the people were living in Egypt, in that city, with Pharaoh. He had his statues and gods that the people were commanded to worship. It was an abomination for the Jewish people to worship God. So they had to, in their secret place and in their home, pray and worship to God. In verse 26, it even mentions that it is an abomination to worship God out in the open and that the people of Israel would be stoned because the laws in Egypt give the people the right to stone anyone that does not worship the gods of Egypt. Let us read together verse 27 and 28. We will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God, as he will command us. So Pharaoh said, I'll let you go, that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only you shall not go very far away. Intercede for me. Even though Pharaoh seen and witnessed the power of God, he still did not want to give in, and he still didn't want to send the people out to worship God in the desert. Let us read verse 29. Then Moses said, Indeed, I am going out from you, and I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart tomorrow from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. But let Pharaoh not deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. After Pharaoh had his meeting with Moses and Aaron, Moses interceded for Pharaoh and the wild animals they left. We're going to read the rest of the chapter, verse 30 to 32. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. He removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants and from his people. Not one remained, but Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also, neither would he let the people go. I know I mentioned that we are privileged to live in this time and these days that we have the freedom to worship God and also the freedom to do his will. But times are going to change according to the revelation. And I want to read a little quote from Dr. Baruch Corman. So in the very last days before Jesus returns, this is what's going to happen. It's going to be something like what we read is ha has happened in Egypt. And here it says, we are never going to be approved by others in the last days. We will see in the last days it will be an abomination to worship God, just like it was in Egypt back then. Egypt symbolizes the world back then. God will also bring plagues in the last days, as it says in Revelation. 
the world is becoming more and more resentful of biblical truth. The world says you're being offensive. You're being unreasonable. You are a bigot. You are not proper. We are not just different, but we become very offensive. That is all very true and coming our way. And it says that God will shorten the time. Otherwise, no one will be saved. Thank you so much for watching. And next time we're going to study Exodus chapter 9.